News at 4 begins now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Creme 2 News First at 4. I'm Tom Sherry. Hi, everyone. I'm Regina on Whitney is off. Well, earlier today, Governor Inslee announced that he will be visiting Spokane tomorrow. His last visit was back in February. And the governor will arrive in Spokane in the afternoon. Our own Ian Smay is in the newsroom tonight with more on the governor's visit. Hi, Ian. That's right, Regina. The governor's first stop will be a tour of the Spokane Arena mass vaccination site. Afterwards, he'll be visiting Second Harvest. Also earlier today, Inslee talked about next Monday, which is when the state will reevaluate each county individually and decide if they will stay in phase three or go back to phase two. I asked him what the time frame was for the data being used by the state, and here's what he had to say. Well, the, the numbers will be the most recent complete numbers that are available on Monday. So that's the numbers that will be making the call here. Now, there's incomplete numbers that come in for some period of time. We need to make decisions based on the complete numbers. Inslee was also insistent that it's not a decision made by him. Instead, whether or not a county gets to stay in phase three depends on how the data lines up with the state's metrics. The two metrics currently used are a county's case rate over two weeks and hospitalization rates over one week. Both must meet the metrics to stay in phase three. As of this afternoon, there are at least nine counties in eastern Washington that don't meet at least one metric. If you look at the State Department of Health data, those counties include here in Spokane County, Whitman County, and Stevens County. You can find a full map of what counties are meeting the metrics on CREM.com. In the newsroom, Ian Smay, CREM2 News. Ian, thank you. Well, happening today, walk-up vaccine appointments are available at the Spokane Arena. Appointments are available until 6.30 tonight. The arena has both the first and second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. So this is for anyone who is currently eligible in the state. So starting April 15th, all adults in Washington will be eligible to get the vaccine and can continue using this method of making appointments. Eligible people can also walk up to the ticket booth at the arena to schedule an appointment. It's not guaranteed though that they will be able to schedule an appointment on the same day, but in some cases they say they can. Also happening today, the first vaccines are being administered at a new clinic run by Chaz Health at Spokane Community College. The site is located at SCC's Walter S. Johnson Sports Center. Community members do not need to be patients of Chaz Health to receive a vaccine, but they must meet current eligibility requirements in Washington State. An appointment is required to receive the vaccine walk-ins and they are not available. Uh, Walk-in uh, walk-ins are not available. Appointments are available for you on the Chaz Health website. In the meantime, MultiCare has more than 500 vaccine appointments available today and tomorrow. MultiCare says since eligibility expands next week, it's the perfect time for those who are already eligible to schedule their appointment. Now the available appointments are for first and second doses to check your eligibility and to schedule an appointment in Eastern Washington or Northern Idaho. Just text the word vaccine to 509-448-2000 and we will send you a link. Well, if you commute on Interstate 90 through Spokane, you're going to see multiple changes along the corridor starting next Tuesday. Five more newly installed ramp meters will go live in the morning and the afternoon. The ramp meters are being used to reduce collisions, relieve congestion, and improve safety on the interstate and the connecting networks. That's according to the Washington Department of Transportation. Not all five new ramp meters will activate on the same day. WashDOT is using a phased approach to turn them on each day. On Tuesday, the Walnut and Monroe Street eastbound ramp will be one of the first to go live. Then the ramp meters at Brown and Division East and Westbound and Hamilton will go live the following days. The ramp meter that merges Highway 195 onto I-90 has been live for about two years now. WashDOT compared collision data from 18 months before it went live and 18 uh, months after it turned, uh, went live. Turns out, according to DOT, that that ramp meter is already a big success. And what we saw is a 69% reduction in collisions with folks getting on to eastbound I-90. But what is more um, telling is that in that time frame, we went from seven serious injury collisions 18 months before to zero after. And that's wow. really the telling part is that a serious collision, a collision of any type is no good. But when you talk about serious collision, that means somebody's getting injured. Coming up at five o'clock tonight, our Amanda Rowley will explain how each ramp meter works and how they will affect your commute next week. 
Well, the city of Spokane is launching a $70 million construction season. The investment includes $40 million in new work and another $30 million in projects continuing from last year. Now, the funding will go towards improving streets, protecting the Spokane River, and investing in the city's critical water and sewer systems. Today, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward spoke about how the city construction will benefit the community. Our projects will support critical utility needs and also assist traveling public, including motorists, bicyclists and pedestrians, while putting community members to work. Now, some of the construction projects include redoing the street from East Stone to Division, finishing Centennial Trail in West Central neighborhoods and working on a plan for COVID relief money. All right, now time for a look at weather. Tom Sherry here with us. So, Tom, uh, I'm talking, I, I saw everything today. I mean, I saw the sun a yep. little bit. I saw hail. I saw wind. <laughs> it was all there today. <laughs> it was all there. Uh, it won't be there tomorrow, but it'll be all there again on Saturday. And take a look at the weather headlines. Mostly clear and cold tonight. Going to drop down into the upper 20s. We'll start out sunny tomorrow, but then we'll see increasing afternoon clouds and again some gusty winds and then uh, like I said before it'll be a repeat of today's weather on Saturday even cooler I think chance of rain and snow showers uh, windy and might even see a little bit of blowing dust on Saturday as well right now we're at 49 degrees wind is out of the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and you can see the cloud cover out there Sh uh, showers are in extreme eastern Washington some snow showers in areas of northern Idaho so if you're heading across 4th of July or lookout pass watch out you may run into a little bit of snow there and again you can see those showers that are moving either north of us or just to the west of the uh, Spokane area 29 the expected overnight low will look for a high tomorrow of 55 as I mentioned sunny start then clouds in the afternoon for the weekend we're talking about again a chance of snow showers on Saturday windy high wind gusts and then mostly sunny and 53 on Sunday now I will tell you next week starts to get really nice I love your seven-day forecast coming right up